live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit. Local 4 News at Noon starts now. The vaccine effort ramping up across the state with a new timeline and a new mass vaccination site. We have everything you need to know to plan your shot. Plus, Michael Foy, the Wixom man accused of being one of the most violent participants in the siege on Capitol Hill, is due in court this afternoon. What you can expect. But we begin with breaking news from Lincoln Park. State police have issued an alert for a missing seven-year-old girl that may be in danger. Jessica Miller, last seen two weeks ago with her mother, 38-year-old Kimberly Michelle Miller. Police say her mother is a known drug abuser and suffers from schizophrenia. Jessica was last seen wearing a T-shirt, blue jeans, and red Nike shoes. If you have any information on their whereabouts, call police immediately. Also breaking at this noontime, two men charged with assaulting Brian Sicknick, the U.S. Capitol Police officer who died after the January 6th insurrection. The men are not charged in his death. The U.S. Capitol Police previously said Sicknick was, quote, injured while physically engaging with protesters, end quote, but an autopsy and toxicology report has not been completed. And speaking of the deadly Capitol Hill insurrection, Michael Foy, the Wixom man accused of being one of the most violent participants in the siege, is due in court this afternoon. He's accused of beating a police officer with a hockey stick. And as Nick Monticelli tells us, his attorney is asking for his release. Good afternoon. We're about an hour away now from this hearing in Washington, D.C. Michael Foy, his defense attorney, is saying that he is not a threat and he should be allowed to go. The prosecutors filing new paperwork saying, no, we don't think so. 30-year-old Michael Foy has been locked up in Washington, D.C. since he was arrested at his Wixom condo in late January. Court documents say Foy traveled to D.C. to attend President Trump's rally and then moved to the Capitol. The feds say during the insurrection, he was the most violent of all the participants, using a hockey stick to beat officers, which was recorded on body cam. But his attorney is arguing Foy was trying to protect others, citing that body cam footage where people were screaming that police were inadvertently trampling and killing a woman there. While arguing for Foy to be allowed bond, his attorney writes, on January 6th, when people were being crushed at his feet, he acted in defense of those others. He saw individuals in imminent danger of bodily harm and used a reasonable amount of force to protect and defend those people who were being trampled. The filing also discusses Foy having a recent diagnosis of PTSD from his time in the Marines. There are also dozens of letters supporting Foy, one from his father writing, I know for a fact my son did not go there with any ill intent to do anyone any harm. I truly believe emotions and bad decisions were the recipe for the day. So please don't let one day define my son. I love him dearly and need him. Federal prosecutors see it differently. In new court documents filed before the weekend, they say Foy beat police officers repeatedly with a hockey stick and the claims of trying to help others fall short, writing he is seen encouraging other rioters to assault the officers as well to join him when he crawled through a destroyed window and into the capital of the United States weapon in hand. Foy's attorney also said that they believe his PTSD may have triggered some of his actions during that insurrection. And again, they don't believe it's a flight risk nor a danger to others. We'll see what the judge has to say here in about an hour. I'm Nick Monticelli, Local 4. Southfield police are investigating a deadly stabbing. It happened this morning at the Lancaster Hills apartment complex near 12 Mile and Telegraph. Officers responded to a report of a domestic assault and a stabbing. A 27-year-old man was taken to hospital where he died from his injuries. His 22-year-old girlfriend was taken into custody. Well, let's turn our attention now to the coronavirus numbers. The United States passes 29,440,000 coronavirus cases. More than 534,000 people have died from the virus. These are numbers from the Johns Hopkins University database. Now, here at home, we expect an update on the state's numbers. This afternoon, it's going to be a two-day total, Sunday's and today's numbers. And in the meantime, the state's expanding vaccine eligibility in two phases. Starting March 22nd, adults 16 to 49 are eligible if they have certain medical conditions. Then on April 5th, all Michiganders age 16 and up are going to be eligible. Macomb County is ahead of schedule. We posted all of the information you need to make your appointments at clickondetroit.com. 
There's also going to be a regional vaccine hub at Ford Field, which can vaccinate up to 6,500 people a day as we wait for more people to be vaccinated. And Dr. Fauci is asking Americans to keep following personal safety measures, warning the U.S. is vulnerable to another coronavirus surge. We can avoid that if we continue to vaccinate people, get more and more protection without all of a sudden pulling back on public health measures. In the meantime, in Texas, it's time for spring break on South Padre Island. And for some, it's time to go mask free. The state's governor repealed a statewide mask mandate and is allowing businesses to operate at full capacity. Spring breakers are ready to party, but as Jay Gray reports, some local health officials are concerned about the maskless crowds. Well, right now we've got still a pretty heavy fog over the island and overcast. It's going to be overcast throughout the day, but it shouldn't slow down the crowds, which has been showing up here over the weekend and will continue, we expect, through spring break. What are we seeing? Well, we're not seeing a bunch of masks or a lot of social distancing on the beach. You've got a lot of kids here enjoying their spring break. Families as well making the trip out, saying that they've been pent up. They need to get out. It had been a year and they're ready to go. Of course, the state of Texas, Governor Greg Abbott, dropped the mask mandate as well as any restrictions uh, with regard to COVID-19 just ahead of spring break. And that's got some worried about what's going to happen as a result of the crowds here. I am worried about the COVID, but being outside with the sun and everything, it, you know, it helps out a lot. But I don't really agree with the governor's decision right now. The beach is coming back to life. The town's coming back to life. Uh, we're having some fun out here. Um, restrictions aren't so crazy. You know, everybody's just kind of relaxed. Yeah, so look, of course, the real concern here is twofold. First, will there be some type of spike in infections here on the island after spring break is over? And, and also, well, some of the students, as they get back to their campuses, to their classes, wherever they're going, and then uh, the families that get back into their communities, will they help to spread the virus? Everyone watching that very closely as the party continues here on Padre Island. That's the latest here in Texas. I'm Jay Gray. Back to you. All right, Jay, thank you very much. In the meantime, the Tigers opening day is April 1st. And right now, only 1,000 fans are going to be allowed in to enjoy the action. But today, several Republican lawmakers are calling on Governor Gretchen Whitmer to increase that capacity. T and we're calling on Governor Whitmer to do the right thing and increase capacity at opening day. And of course, to safely reopen the state and allow our small business owners and entrepreneurs to return to a sense of normalcy. And the governor's office is responding this afternoon. They released a statement that reads in part, quote, in the lead up to opening day, the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services has been closed in close discussion with the Tigers and the team at Comerica Park to find a safe path forward to expand capacity limits at the stadium. Given our success during the pause to save lives and expansion of vaccine eligibility, we feel confident that our state is making tremendous strides to get back to normal as quickly as possible, end quote. The IRS says some eligible Americans have already gotten their $1,400 stimulus payments, but don't worry if you haven't received yours yet. In the coming weeks, more batches of payments are going to be sent via direct deposit and through the mail as a check or a debit card. Starting today, you can also check the status of your payment by going to the IRS Get My Payment online tool. And in the meantime, President Biden's expected to announce Gene Sperling is going to oversee the implementation of his sweeping $1.9 trillion COVID relief law. Now, sources say that Sperling's job will be to get the money out the door and partner with the state and local officials who are going to receive it. He's also going to be responsible for ensuring that they don't mismanage the funds. Well, big changes take effect today for bus riders in Metro Detroit. DDOT and SMART will resume collecting fares and are going to allow more riders. New barriers have been put up inside the buses to separate riders, and all riders must wear masks. There's capacity limits for both bus systems, 20 riders for standard buses, 26 riders for articulated buses. And coronavirus vaccines have been available for drivers for weeks now. Well, we're turning our attention to the weather, and as we look live at our cameras outside in the sky cam, it looks beautiful. But Brandon's saying, uh-oh, look out, could be trouble tonight. Right, Brandon? <laughs>
Oftentimes, those high clouds streaming in are ahead of a storm, and that is the case, Rod. It's also a little chilly out there, which makes the incoming storm a little questionable. What will it be? Well, it could be a little bit of everything. Right now, we have these winds coming off of the big lakes on the east side, 7 to 17 miles an hour. So temps in the lower 30s still feel like teens and low 20s as you're heading out and about. We see these middle upper 30s through the day with increasing clouds. The winds also gusting 15 to uh, 20 or 25. So a little bit of a bite in the air and some of the clouds streaming in are also giving way to a little bit of sunshine, but there is more and more cloud cover coming. Rod, coming up, we will time out this storm. It's a battle of the wet weather versus the dry weather over uh, our state, which hasn't really seen anything for the month of March yet. Coming up. Look forward to that forecast from you a little bit later. Thank you very much. In the meantime, the Vatican decrees that the Catholic Church cannot bless same-sex unions since God, quote, cannot bless sin, end quote. Now, the decree upholds that the church should welcome and bless gay people, but not their unions. Catholic teaching holds that marriage, a lifelong union between a man and a woman, is part of God's plan and is intended for the sake of creating new life. Officials say that, since gay unions are not intended to be part of that plan, they cannot be blessed by the church. Well, still to come, the 2021 Oscar nominations are announced, how history is being made, and how one Metro Detroiter is being honored for his work. 